Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about confluence and um, what confluence is and uh, one of the problems that uh, confluence can cause in trading. So confluence refers to areas on the price chart that has evidence supporting either a buy or sell trade. The more evidence a level has, the more confluence the trade is said to have. Um, ultimately, confluence is you're trying to put um, together a um, and gather evidence, I suppose put together a picture and a story um, and um, supporting your uh, your your buy trade or your sell trade. So you're using the you know indicators, tools, um, you know price action at a level to support a buy or a sell trade. Now, confluence is not a trading strategy, right? So what I mean by that is you have to have a strategy, a foundation. So you have to have um, rules of engagement for you to enter a trade first. Confluence should be used in addition to your trading strategy. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a whiteboard and I'm going to see if I can explain this. So let's say that you um, are a uh, trend trader and you're looking for a level to trade off of, right? And prices are making higher highs and higher lows. Now, your strategy for entering a trade is, for example, you need um, to see a FIB level, right? So you've got maybe the 38.2, the 61.8% level, or even the 78.6, all right? So you've got to see a FIB level, right? FIB retracement level as a lot of uh, train traders do use uh, Fibonacci. And then obviously you have to have your foundation. So you have to see um, it at a, if you're buying, it has to be a support level, right? So you wanna see some support. And so you look back on the chart and you've seen that the support level has been used as resistance and support various times in the past. So that confirms, um, you know, uh, one of your, uh, it ticks one of your boxes. And then what you want to see as well is maybe some bullish price action, right? So bullish price action. So like a pin bar or an engulfing candle or anything uh, bullish, right? So this would be your minimum requirement for your trading strategy, yeah? Um, A, T, E, G, Y, right? So at this level here, you've got all that aligned for your buy trade. Now, confluence now comes in when you wanna see a bit more evidence supporting this level here. So you've got your strategy here, and then maybe what you're seeing is um, some sort of moving average, right? So there might be a moving average also coming up and it might be the first time it's tested the moving average, right? So now you've got moving average, yeah, a moving average bounce, right? Or dynamic, what is called dynamic support. Um, you might also have um, a, a, an RSI over um, over sold level here. So for example, on the indicator, you might put an indicator on your chart and then you've got maybe, you know, the levels 70 and 30 or whatever your, uh, or whatever your, um, your settings are on the RSI. So that would be 70, 7, zero and that would be 30 right and then 
prices are in between here 70 and 30 then all of a sudden around here you've got prices being oversold it comes out of the 30 zone right so then you've got the RSI oversold OS I put right so this would be added confluence right to that trade um, and why would you need to use confluence if you have a trading strategy well a lot of traders use confluence maybe to um, add to extra So a lot of traders will use confluence for things like position sizing. So whereas their strategy, they might risk maybe, you know, 1% on a trade. Now, if they have maybe a lot more going for the trade, then they might risk, you know, 2%. They might feel to themselves, this is what I you know, I, I want to risk because I have all these things going for it, right? So you've got, at this level, you've got Fibonacci traders, you've got support and resistance traders, you've got price action traders looking at this level. Then you've got traders that use uh, moving averages here that are looking to get in at, at that level. And you've got traders that use the relative strength index indicator, right? So you've got lots and lots of demand, yeah? and demand a and d right and demand is buying right there's loads of buy orders supporting this area here so maybe you might want to put a little bit you know um more onto a trade so just to summarize what you need to use confluence for is in addition to your strategy, do not use confluence by itself. Don't just look at a level one day and say, okay, um, this has a moving average and it has an RSI, but it doesn't have any price action, but I've got enough, right? You have to have a strategy because confluence can change. There are so many different indicators, hundreds, if not thousands of different types of indicators. And what happens is, is if you don't have a set of rules of engagement, your confluences will always change and you won't have any consistency in your strategy. If you're just saying one day you want to see a moving average or an advanced pattern like a bat pattern at a level and then the next trade you're looking at um you know the macd or a bollinger band indicator it's it's just not going to give you the consistency in the trading that you want to see start off with your strategy as your foundation that's your reason to enter and if you want to use confluence um in addition to give you the confidence matter of fact to enter um a trade um then you can possibly you know add some extra indicators on there just to support your trade if you wanted to um you know go bigger in size if not then um you know you go for your normal position size so i also want to talk about um analysis paralysis which can happen with confluence and I will show you that on a price chart so here we are on the euro dollar 60 minute chart and the area I want to focus in on is this area right here so for traders who don't have a foundational uh, type strategy and are just purely using confluence uh, to trade and really don't have any consistency, what will happen is, is um, you will suffer from, again, something called analysis paralysis. So let's say, for example, we have a level of you know support and resistance. So we've had a massive rejection here, we had a rejection here, so prices came up, 
had some bearish price action and then in the same hour prices came up came back down now turn support we have a bit of support support bit of resistance prices have come back up into this zone now again and we're at some resistance now if you haven't got um, a foundational set of rules and you're just looking for rules as far as using indicators um, and uh, just using confluence and trying to find reasons as to why you should be entering a possible short trade um, what tends to happen is you will um, freeze again analysis uh, paralysis so you'll look at these indicators so we've got the um, MACD we've got the relative strength index we've got the stochastic which are quite popular um, indicators plus we've got some uh, moving averages on here as well so we can see here that prices are at a level of interest a resistance level now if you're waiting for the perfect setup, so we're looking for um, you know reasons why we should be entering shorts. Let's go down to the stochastic, right? So the stochastic at this point in time here uh, was really not showing anything. It wasn't showing um, any kind of overbought or oversold reading. So we would we couldn't enter there. The RSI again is not showing any kind of uh, oversold or overbought reading. In fact, the MACD is showing um, momentum to the upside until it crosses right here. Right. So even with a MACD cross, we might have one reason to enter now let's look at some moving averages um, we've got the uh, 20 50 and I think it's the 100 on here uh, period moving average now we have prices in between um, dynamic support and resistance so we've got prices being supported by this moving average, this green moving average, I think is the 20 uh, moving average as well as the blue moving average. And then it's prices in between this, um, uh, the, the yellow or the golden one, which is yes, which is the 100 period moving average. Um, so you're missing out, potentially missing out on a trade to the downside because of the fact that you've got so many indicators conflicting um, with signals. And I wouldn't say necessarily missing out on a trade, you'd probably just say, all right, then, well, um, I wouldn't take the trade. But let's say, for example, you had a strategy where you said, okay, if prices are at a support or resistance level, and again, I see some bearish price action against resistance, which we got this, uh, this pin bar, right and that is your basic strategy um resistance bearish price action um that is your reason to enter that should be your reason to enter if that is the two criteria that you need to enter a trade everything else should be supporting if it doesn't support your trade to the downside then um maybe you just enter at a normal position size confluence um, really, again, should just be um, any additional um, evidence to support your trade, but it should not be the reason or you should not find reasons as to why this should be your trade. And again, going back to analysis paralysis, um, you will have these situations where traders will just freeze on a trade and not take this trade they would be paralyzed pretty much um, by the fact that and overwhelmed by, you know, um, conflicting signals or not having enough signals on a price chart. And um, yeah, so uh, just use Confluence as an in addition to your trading strategy. Hopefully that helps. And um, if you do have any questions, just email me at info at trading180.com.